Good morning. I'm Sherry from A Quilting Life. And I'm Chelsea from Chelsea Stratton Designs. And we are here for podcast episode 10. It's Number 10. <laughs> yeah, it's fun that it's our 10th episode. This is airing on Monday, September 21st. Yeah. 2020. Yeah. So just again, a couple days before. Right. We're taping on Saturday. So. Yeah. <laughs> It's the easiest day of the week to get together these yes. days. Yes. Okay, so um, today's quilt on the wall is one of my new patterns. It's called Botanical Garden. It's layer cake friendly. And mom pieced it for me because <laughs> I have been very busy <laughs> with other projects and homeschooling and such. But this one is a lot of fun and I think it went together Really? Pretty, really quickly. Pretty you know? quickly, yeah. Yeah, so this you'll be able to find, we'll link it in the show notes and uh, you'll be able to find it in my Etsy shop. So this one I really, really love and mom gets to keep so I don't get to take this one home. She she pieced it for me. So uh, also the quilt on the table is called origami and it's fat quarter friendly. It's uh, a bigger block quilt, which sometimes I really need. I love that change of pace and so I really really love this one as well you'll be able to find that in the show notes as well so and also I have already shown the one on the ladder land I love it's my row quilt um but I just wanted to have it in here today as well so those are some patterns uh today that you can find if you're looking for something to sew (laughs) yeah they're great yep and they're in our new happy days collection um so yeah Fun. Okay, <laughs> I have the new find an old favorite, and I'll start. The first one is kind of an old favorite, is and I'm sure many of you out there have made the yellow brick road quilt from I think it was back in the late 90s or, or I don't know. I know I made half a dozen or more, and I realized a few months ago that there was a new pattern from the same designer, Terry Atkinson, called Mini Brick Road. Wow. So, of course, I was intrigued, and it's a pattern for a table runner and placemats and a doll quilt. And, oh. And so I made two. I you made with All Hallows Eve by Joanna Figueroa, a so table runner. So cute. And oh, wow. I made this one. It's too late for 4th of July this year, but I got it bound yesterday for next year. Oh my goodness. So, and it's just, it's a charm pack pattern and you just cut it up all different ways and put it back together. I have to go buy this pattern now. Such a a fun little pattern. So, um, yeah, if you're looking for something quick, I I recommend a table runner. And one thing about the All Hallows Eve, I want to make a bigger quilt. And so... This was great because I kind of got used to playing with the fabrics. Yeah. On a table runner. So I feel like so like smaller projects are so much more satisfying because you can just finish them up in essentially a day. So yeah, I love that. And I might I want to take this one home. (laughs) She won't let me. It's going on the dining table (laughs) right after we're done. And shout out to my friend Gail who quilted them for me in a day and got them back to me. Yeah. Love Um, her. I miss her. Yeah. So. And a new, another new find, I'll just pick it up really, I have it on the ground, I'll pick it up. (laughs) I might need this one, I saw this. This Um, is great, it's called the Sew Pad, and it, this was sent to me for free by the husband and wife who are selling these, so I didn't purchase it, they sent it to me, they said, try it out, let us know what you think, and I put it on my sewing chair, and it really is comfortable, it's medical grade material, and I really feel like... I have better posture when I'm sitting on this. Okay. And so it's been, it's been really nice. I've been, I've had it for about two weeks now. Yeah. And you really like it. And I've, I've really enjoyed it. So I might have to check it out because currently I'm using two, um, pillows. Oh yeah. No, this <laughs> is great. On. Cause I don't have any, any padding. Mine is like an old wooden chair from a dining table. Right. And it can get uncomfortable when you're sewing for, for quite a while and yeah so yeah maybe I'll have to check it out yeah and my (laughs) chair is in fact I've had people ask about my chair and I have to tell them it was my husband's grandmother's yeah I like kitchen table chair from the 1970s yeah but it it doesn't have a ton of padding so this has really been nice yeah I love your chair though because it does have that tiny bit but Mm -hmm. the added I think really really helps yeah so okay. okay um what's new with 
with Chelsea and and me. Uh, first of all, Moda the U signups are ongoing. So if you want to take that class, I'm not sure when the class registration ends, but if you want a kit, I believe you have to sign up by Wednesday so that those can get shipped out before of the class this week? of this week, oh, okay. the 23rd. So that those can get shipped out and arrive at your home before the class starts in October. And the kits that I did for the pillow are super cute. They have happy days, Aww. Balboa, and Fun. summer sweet fabrics. So, oh, I like that you mixed them all. Yeah. So thank you to Moda for getting me a little bit of happy days for those quilts. We have mini charm packs in them. And then Balboa is shipping soon. Yes. We've been like awaiting it I've daily. I've been checking every day, waiting yeah. for my ship notice, but not it yet, will, but soon. Yeah. It'll be shipping very soon. Uh, I know we have people who are waiting for their projects packages and right um so yeah yeah and then labor of love quilt along begins september 30th so that's a week from wednesday that's so soon can i can't believe it's yeah. like almost the end of september i can't either it's crazy yeah uh i know i've talked i feel like i talked about this a while ago but i have two new fall quilt patterns that will actually be releasing soon. I know I had talked about those before, but um, a friend of our quilter is actually piecing one of the quilts for me and I'm working on the other one. So that that's kind of what I'm working on right now since all my Happy Days quilts are done. Yeah. So hopefully you guys will be able to see those early October. Uh, so very soon, I think. Yeah, that'll be fun. I've, I've seen the digital mock-up so I'm excited to Yay. see them in fabric <laughs> yeah it'll be fun yeah okay. okay so we move on to listener questions yes okay okay so I'm gonna read this first one okay it says I have a very modern home I need ideas on how to display my quilts I am also wondering what people do with smaller quilts I see a lot of patterns for 54 by 54 square quilts and I think they are cute, but have no idea what I would do with one that small. This is a great question. And I'm actually going to use my Land I Love quilt as an example. It is in about that range um, for the size of that 54 by 54. It's close to that. Uh, this is like the perfect size to throw over your couch, to hang on the wall. I love hanging quilts on walls. Um, so for something smaller... Like, it's totally fine, I think, and looks so cute to hang on your wall, you know, or just throw over a couch, like fold it up in thirds and throw it over a couch. But um, I also have a very modern home, so this question was great for me. Uh, I use quilt ladders to display quilts, and I'll show, I'll share a picture of an example that I have, and it's still very modern, um... And then I also, I have a bookshelf and I stack quilts in this old bookshelf. And in my TV stand, actually, I, it has a glass case. And so you can see the quilts through it, but it's not like, I feel like that was always my fear. And growing up too, I used to joke around with my mom, like, mom, someday I'm going to wake up and the whole house is going to be stitched together. And <laughs> it's just too much. Like I thought there was just too many quilts, but you can still decorate and make it modern. Um, and I'll have some pictures thrown up on the YouTube for you guys to see, but you know, just anything, simplify it, you know, don't get too crazy, but yeah. Yeah. I was thinking just a couple things to add. 54 by 54 is a great size to put on a table, kind of diagonally. Um, yeah. So where it's not, you know, so it's like part of it's falling off either yes. side. And I feel like, you know, if you put a modern quilt on a table, you're going to have a modern look. If you yeah. put a traditional quilt on a table, you're going to have a traditional look. Yeah. And the same thing with, I love to put quilts in baskets. Oh, me too. So I if, to if the that. basket is wire it has a more modern mm -hmm. feel and and so I feel like a lot of the ways that traditional and modern quilters display their quilts can be the same and it's actually the yeah material that or yeah changes the it fabrics up. that you use right so I definitely agree with that when you're 
you know, quilting different things. Everything's going to give a different look. Right. So. But it is fun. Chelsea's home is more modern than ours. Ours is more traditional. And she's still able to display all of her yeah. quilts and use them in a, in a more modern yeah. setting. Fit them in my style and everything. Right. So. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, and I like smaller quilts to hang on the wall too. Like, um, my new row quilt is going in my laundry room. So it's a smaller oh. room, but a smaller quilt. So oh, I can't wait to see that. Yeah. So I know exactly where you're going to put it too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like picturing it right now. Uh huh. Okay. Next question. This is a great one too. I was wondering when you make a quilt that has the same block over and over, how do you keep from getting bored? And that is a great question because. Both of us have patterns. I mean, this is basically the same block over and over. This is the same block and over and over. Yeah. Part of it is that you're using different fabrics. So yeah. that helps. But I also feel like I do them in pieces. So when I made this quilt, I did all the flying geese first. Yeah. And so you have I like just, different steps. Yeah. And I just kind of chain pieced it. <clears> and I had something on in the background to listen to that helped me not to be bored yeah so I feel like that's the trick because that's kind of how my brain works is I'll get bored super easy and so well first I'm very like color oriented so I'll like put once I'm ready like say you know you're sewing all your red star flowers or whatever I do it by color just because like my brain is like, okay, once I get through the blues, then I know I have to just get through the reds oh. and then the pinks and I get so excited about it. Like, it's so weird, you guys, but oh, that's, that's interesting. like what I do. I can't do it randomly because I know that they're the end point is coming. Not that I don't enjoy it. I still enjoy it. Right. But, and then also like I will watch, um, a show or I'll listen to something. The only thing is like, I don't tend, I don't put headphones in anymore because my kids are all home and I still um, want to be able to hear them. I don't know. That's just something I like to do, but I still keep, you know, a show on or music on and it helps definitely. Oh, so Good idea. I was thinking of something I do. I One thing I really don't like to do is the sashing rows. Oh, yes. And so what I'll do is I'll have those ready to go and I'll kind of sew those as leaders and enders in between blocks so that while I'm sewing all of the stars, I'm also putting these sashing strips together yeah. with the squares so that I don't get bored at the end just sewing sashing. Yeah. So that's that's a trick that I've started doing. I also don't like to, you know, going off of what you just said, I don't like to stop sewing. So absolutely anything that I can sew while I'm sitting down, I'm going to sew it. So yeah, I'll sew like a bunch of different things. That way I'm doing all as much ironing at once that I can do. I don't like to constantly get up and sit back down. Mm. And so right. I'll sometimes have like a bunch of stuff around me or I'll call Ashton in and be like, hey, come grab this for me so I don't have to get up. That's a good idea. She's Remember so when we made that quilt together and... You did all the ironing, oh and I just sat there and sewed. For, it was for our first fabric collection. It was for Bright Sun. It was the Shangri-La quilt with the flying yes. geese. Yeah. And I just, wow, I'm glad you brought this up because this was a very long time ago. We were so excited to start this journey, and I hadn't started quilting yet. And so I just felt like, how can I be a part of this? And I stayed at, at your house. Like till two in the morning. Two in the morning. Yeah. And it just like brought me truly like so much joy to just be ironing what she was sewing. And then we would trade off and I would give her, I would lay out the blocks and yeah. give her everything back. And to me, it was really important and kind of like a defining moment for me because wow. I was like, wow, like this is interesting. Like maybe I would like to do this. And, you know, not very long after I was starting to quilt. So, Wow. That was a long yeah, time ago. That was quite a while ago. <laughs> but that was fun. Very exciting times. Yeah. Very exciting. <laughs> okay. So um, if you have a square quilt, but prefer to make it into a rectangular shape, how would you slash could you add to ends other than repeating blocks to make another row? Um, so I 
Yeah, because I was going to say you'd, you'd have to get enough blocks to make right. another row, essentially. It depends on how much <clears throat> bigger you need it to be. Yeah. I feel like if you need it a lot bigger, you might have to make more blocks. Yeah. But if you just need it a little bit bigger or you're trying to fit it onto a bed, yeah, then borders are the way to go. Yeah. And what I've seen done, and this is actually in a lot of antique quilts that I've seen, is... The top and bottom borders are a different size than the side borders to make it fit a bed. Oh. And so you can do that with a mod- more modern quilt too. So yeah. if you need it longer, more rectangular, make the top and bottom borders wider yeah. so that you can add that length and then make the side borders a little bit smaller so that you're not increasing the width as much. Yeah, That's what I was going to kind of say because depending on how much bigger you would need, like you would have right. to add more blocks but yeah borders would definitely especially like if you needed it to be longer to go to fit on a twin bed is what I was thinking right uh yeah you might need to add blocks just on the very bottom but no borders will totally do it I mean they give you several inches more you know for your quilt so and experiment with using larger borders yeah you could put the same amount and make the side borders narrower than the top and bottom too yeah so That's interesting. Yeah. Good question. The next one is, I struggle reading quilting patterns. My brain just doesn't comprehend them. I'm a visual learner. Unless I have a tutorial to watch with it, what do you recommend I can do to help me stop wasting fabric, making endless mistakes? And I think you are in luck because there are so many online videos, tutorials, that you can watch today that weren't available even five or 10 years ago. Yeah. So, it, you know, number one suggestion is take a class in person if you can. Yes. And then that's it, a great suggestion. So I didn't even think that's not even what I was thinking. That's really smart. Yeah. Tutor, but along with that tutorials, I mean, that's basically right. getting one on one instruction. Right. From someone who's doing the tutorial. Right. Yeah, and that it was really fun for me. And just when I was filming the videos for the Martingale yeah. class, I really did kind of think, what would I say and what would I show in this video class if someone was sitting right here? What, yeah. what are the tips I would give a live class? Yeah, because it's very different yeah. when you're... Uh, I, I really loved this question because I related to it. You know, I started quilting, you know, later... Um, and not very long ago, you know, almost five years ago, four years ago. And that was me at the beginning. I'm very visual. I love to look at pictures. Um, it just took me time too. like, and also I was kind of thrown a curveball. Uh, when I, one, I made a quilt from a different designer and everyone writes their patterns differently. And so I was like, whoa, this isn't like how another designer would essentially, you know, how they would explain how, which right. neither is wrong. They're both, you know, right. Right. Um, so it was kind of like just learning, you know, and then once I got the methods for different, you know, quilt techniques, then you just, you pick it up a little bit better, but right. Uh, yeah, I think tutorials and classes is a good way to go. Yeah. And I just had one more thought about this. This comes from my sewing days when I used to sew for other people, but I would always make a test block with some other fabric other than the fabric they had given me because I was afraid if I wasted their fabric and then didn't have enough to finish their quilt if I made a mistake. So I have all of these test blocks. And looking back, the one thing I wish I would have done is make all of my test blocks from, say, Christmas fabric. Yeah. So that then you can put all your test blocks together in a into quilt. a scrappy quilt. Yeah. So, that would have been really cool. But yeah, making a test block is another great way so that, you know, if you're worried that you're not comprehending the instructions right, yeah. you can just then, play around with it before you use your good fabric. Yeah. Then what's good about that is you know the method and your brain is like, okay, I know how to put this block together now. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Great question. Okay. Um, what quilting software are you using to design your quilts and what are your steps to begin designing an original quilt? Uh, I think ours is the same. We both design in EQ. Right. Uh, I know a lot of people design in Illustrator and Photoshop, 
But for me, essentially EQ, I really like the program. Um, I think it's, there's obviously way more I could even learn about that. I mean, there are so many amazing things you can do in EQ, but it, once you get started on it, I feel like it's fairly easy to learn. Right. Uh, but I would just say what I used to do to start out designing a quill is, and I still do this, uh, get graph paper out, start, you know, just drawing and, you know, start just coming. It doesn't even have to be like, I feel like it's very daunting when you're like, I'm going to draw a quilt block, just draw and doodle and, you know, triangles and squares and rectangles. And you'll, you know, that's just the beginning of it. That's just the start. So, yeah, I like. I have always used graph paper first. And in fact, my early quilts were all designed completely on graph paper. Oh, really? <clears throat> yeah. And wow. then I I won the EQ software in a giveaway on oh, a you blog. Did? Yes, black in my early days of blogging. And that was just, that was it. I just kept I going. I didn't know that. <laughs> yes. My first set, I didn't have to. But then I've just kept upgrading it and upgrading it. We have the most recent version. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I would say is the EQ, if you do use EQ, they have a blog with tutorials. Yes. Which I is really to good that. to follow. Yeah. And I believe they also offer in-person classes. Yeah. And training. I know there are more things that I could still learn with the software too. Same here. Yeah. That is so funny because I was just talking to someone the other day though about how I never win anything. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Like, you know how there's like all these giveaways and all this stuff and I was just kind of laughing about how I'm like, you you put in for a giveaway and it's like, it's going to be me, it's going to be me. And like just hearing that you actually won a giveaway, I'm like, <laughs> oh my goodness, like that's crazy. Oh, that's funny. Okay. So yeah, we both use EQ. Eight and yeah. graph paper, kind of a combination. I mm -hmm. still actually pull out the graph paper I once still in do. a while too, just I to get do. something down before I forget it. Yeah. So, have you ever like woken up in in like the middle of the night and been like, quilt pattern? I yep. have to <laughs> draw yeah. this post-it note next to the to the bed. Write down kind of in my head what I think the block needs to do. And so, mom taught me that. Like when I was younger, I sometimes I couldn't sleep or like I would be thinking about something. And she was like, you should just write it down, like just write it down and then go back to sleep. And I still do that. Like I'll type something up, I'll write something down. It's so crazy, but yeah. that's like something I've done since I was like 10 years old. So yeah. thanks mom. It helps. <laughs> yeah. It does help to get thoughts and ideas out of your um, head. I think so. Okay. In your last podcast, you mentioned leaders and enders. I'm wondering if you can talk a little more about those and I think she's saying, are they the same as those little scraps of fabric people use over and over again at the start and end of a seam? I think there's another name for those, but I'm drawing a blank. And so what I, I think you have it right. They are what a leader and ender is, is a project. Yes, that you use when you begin and when you end sewing so that you don't have to constantly snip the threads. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be the same fabric being used over and over. What you can do is actually sew fabrics together at the beginning and end of a seam so that you're working on another project at the same time. Oh, yeah. So you could, for example, have a stack of two and a half inch squares next to your sewing machine. And at the beginning and the end, you could sew two of those squares together. Well, then when you get them all sewn... You could press them and then put them back next to your sewing machine and you could then start making four patches Yeah, at the beginning and ending of your seam. So you save a lot of thread. It also prevents, sometimes you know when you start sewing and the needle catches yeah. wrong. I think that's more when you have a dull needle. Yeah. But it prevents that from happening because you're always stopping and starting on something else that isn't your main project. Yes. Yeah. So, and I do that all the time. I've been doing you know, four patches. I've been using the honey bun blocks that are going around right now with the internet. I've been sewing strips, sometimes also strips together for those beginning and leader yeah. and ender. So and then it's like something you always have ready to go. And yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm looking for a good scrappy pattern slash patterns using half square triangles. Do you have a favorite? And I actually have one that's my pattern of the month um, this month. It's called North Shore, and it's 
a lot of half square triangles. Uh, so I'll show that in the show notes. And so, yeah, it's one of my favorite half square triangle quilts. Yeah, I have quite a few. My starlight pattern with our summer sweet fabrics uses a lot of half square triangles. Yeah. So that's one that I would recommend. And then also Timeless oh, that came that out one. with our Balboa quilt uses. And then also in 2019... 2019, my half, my block of the month program for the whole year was a half square triangle quilt. And so I always put those block of the month patterns up free for the whole year. And then at the end of the year, when I start the new block of the month, I put the old one in my Etsy shop. So I have a, an entire sampler quilt with 25 different blocks, I think, that are all half square triangle awesome. blocks. Yeah, I like how you were like, 2019 like it was like six years ago (laughs) isn't that the truth that's how it feels I'm like wow 2019 (laughs) so it was like so long ago like the time is strange right it is strange uh what batting do you use for all of your quilts we use the same right um warm and white warm and white warm and white yeah yeah we've always used the same and, and I, I really love it. Yeah. I have never like felt the need to switch. So yeah. Yeah. I love it. I have a, just a comment about that. I, for a while I didn't have any place to store it when we were in the rental before in between our houses. And yeah, so I, I didn't have any for a while and I just recently bought a, an entire roll 40 yards of the 90 inch wide and it feels so good to have it again. Which she called and told me all about. <laughs> yes. But this is the thing. You can look for really good deals if you do have a place to store an entire roll, or even if you're buying the packages. The way I got this one was off Joanne's. Yeah. And I waited till they had a 40% off sale, which thankfully my friend Marion told me they were having. <laughs> and she also told me, you know, sometimes they give you a coupon as well and you can use the coupon along with the sale price and so that's what I did and I actually got this whole roll super good deal yes cheaper than wholesale I I checked wholesale and I paid sixty dollars less than wholesale that way she called me and she was like this is a big deal I gotta tell you about this this deal I got on my batting (laughs) so yeah and I feel like you could have done I mean they sell packaged batting too and so that was a great deal and then also I'm sure most local quilt shops sell batting and they will let you use coupons or their in-store sales yeah for batting occasionally too yep so yeah okay how do you store quilts flat folded or rolled (laughs) okay so um I I roll my new like like my new happy days quilts, I've been keeping these rolled for the most part because I know I'm going to be like taking pictures of them and, uh, just for like social media and stuff. But I honestly just fold mine. I keep them all in a closet folded and I actually just switch them all out. Like, see, I decorated for fall. You guys, I did it. I took the plunge. (laughs) So I switched everything out and Uh I did it by um, season. Okay. So, Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. And then I keep them all. And I think you kind of do the same thing. Like I think you just recently, maybe you did. Yeah. We talked about it in a previous, I've started it. I've got, yeah. But somebody had the best idea. I can remember if I saw on social media or if you told me they took pool noodles. I've seen that. And they rolled the quilts around the pool noodles, um, as a guide and then you don't get creases, like there's a crease in my row quilt right here, um, which I thought was super interesting. But just for me, like I fold them and keep them in cabinets and closets, and that's how I like them. Because by the time I lay them on a bed, that crease is going to go away very right. quickly. So, Yeah, I feel like with the newer quilts, I used to always keep them flat on a bed in the guest room until we went to quilt market so that there were no yes, creases no creases in that quilt and then you know you pack it up in the suitcase you take it to quilt market and you lay get it on to the, the hotel, hotel bed, bed and you lay it out <laughs> and but now since we haven't been traveling yeah I've I've been folding more I do try to you know I hang different quilts I have yeah. a couple of these rods throughout the house and I switch them out so I feel like a quilt that maybe is folded 
for eight months out of the year, then it gets its four months yeah. where it's hanging so the wrinkles can fall out. Yeah. I, I do like to roll things as much as possible. And also, the bigger the shelf, I'll, I'll fold the quilt so it takes up the full size yeah. of the shelf instead of having two stacks one stack where they're folded so they have fewer creases and you have a little pyramid of stacked so, rolled quilts yes <laughs> so and then also you know if you display them in a basket or on a shelf yeah, i roll them and put roll them, them and put them in the basket yeah so i guess we do actually all three we do we do all three flat, options folded and roll <laughs> and i have seen also people fold them differently so that um, instead of just folding on the vertical and the horizontal, I've seen people make a diagonal fold. Oh. And I've heard that perhaps that since you're folding that way, that you're not putting as much pressure on the fibers. So I'm, oh there, there are all sorts of that's ways. That's very intense. To store. I, <laughs> but, I don't think that much about it, but yeah, so, that's interesting. Yeah. But I usually just try to, and, and I did start an inventory. I've gone, gone through one closet and I actually... Yeah. And made a list of which quilts were on which shelf so that I could find things. That is so smart. Quickly. I have two more closets to inventory and then I'll oh my goodness. be done. I, I don't know. You know, people ask the us all the time. inventory queen. Well, what do, you, what do you do with all those quilts? And yeah. in the past, I was traveling with all these quilts a lot. For trunk shows. For trunk shows. Yeah. And, you know, taking four. I couldn't get rid of some quilts because I needed them for the lecture or yeah. the trunk show. But now, I, you know, they are kind of not being used as much yeah. and not being unfolded as much. So hopefully we'll get back to yeah. some one of, of One of my very good friends actually just asked me that. She's not a quilt. Well, actually, she does quilt. Uh-huh. Um, she sews. Um, but she, she was like, what do you do with them all? I just imagine your house overflowing with quilts. And I'm like, yeah, it kind of is overflowing with quilts, but I love them. So yeah. <laughs> they just, you know, get rotated out. And yeah, yeah. So it was really funny. Yeah, I did get rid of quite a few when we moved. I Some of the yeah, guys you did. that were helping us, I said, take a quilt for your wife or for yeah. your daughter or your son for you. And that I just was so nice. Well, I just took a whole stack of things and they were quilts that I didn't use in my lectures. I think I took some too. I think. Yeah. Pretty sure. So, I, did. I have kids and grandkids to give yeah. them to too. Actually, Ashton, um, my oldest, she, we were decorating the house for fall and I put my quilt that's on in American patchwork and quilting, um, on the ladder uh-huh. and uh, she goes, Oh mom, I need, you need to give me a fall quilt. And I said, Oh, oh but that's what I'm working on right now is I'm trying to finish up seasonal quilts. And she was like, I'll just ask grandma. I know she has <laughs> some. And I'm like, Oh, oh my goodness. Cute. So yeah, she knows where to find them, mom. She that's knows cute. where and, to find them. And having too many quilts is really why I started my blog in the first place, because I really was giving a lot of them away Yeah, back then and baby quilts and quilts to family and friends and so that was the reason I started the blog. I thought, I need to keep track of all these things that I'm giving away. Yeah. And so I started the blog just to keep to track. To document it. To document it yeah. before I gave them away. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. All right. Okay. Do you have a tip of the day I today? kind of... Uh, I kind of don't, do you? <laughs> I guess I, I should have thought about that. Beforehand. I know. I feel I feel like lately a lot of our tips have been within the questions right. and so right. Um I'll watch out for that for next time. Yeah, next time I promise we'll <laughs> yes. be better, you guys. <laughs> yeah. I do have a review from Apple Podcasts and from Blue Bis <laughs> Yes, thank you so much for the reviews. There were actually quite a few new ones again. And this one says, I have come to look forward to the Monday mornings that include a fresh podcast from A Quilting Life. It feels like I'm enjoying a get together with a couple of quilting girlfriends. Sherry and Chelsea share fabrics, quilts, notions, ideas, and whatever else great information comes up in their conversations. I would highly recommend this enjoyable podcast. You are doing an amazing job, ladies. Oh, thank you. Yes, thank you. That That's kind of hope I, that's how I hope it feels like for everyone is that they're you know, enjoying some time with us around the table, like, right. So thank you so much for that. Yeah. I appreciate that. And it, it really is fun. We, I think we really do look forward to each other's answers because yeah. 
I compile the questions usually just the night before, and I send Chelsea a copy, and I have a copy, and so we're both thinking about them, but we don't ever discuss yeah. what we're going to talk about. Yeah, we never have, like, yeah. a meeting where it's, like, scripted, right. or we just, like, yeah. meet up, and it's, I feel like it's, um, and I hope it comes, you know, off very naturally, but we just, you know, we've, it's a great vibe that we kind of have yeah. I feel like and so so I enjoy her company so yeah <laughs> so it's always good so, so and sometimes I do I look at the questions I think oh I can't wait to hear what Chelsea yeah will say about this so, yeah same yeah. here so our next podcast will be Monday October 5th October 5th and so okay. we'll see you then and thank you so much for stopping by whether you're listening in on um your favorite subscriber or if you're watching us on YouTube we're just so grateful that you're here and right So thank you so much. Thanks so much.